Okay, thanks for watching this video on puppy training tips. My name is Eric Latender, and I'm also known as the Amazing Dog Training Man. That's a book I wrote, and you can, it's available on a lot of different places. But if you're interested, you can get my free ebook, 101 Ways to Improve Your Dog's Behavior, by going to AmazingDogTrainingMan.com. You can get it absolutely free. But you came here for puppy training tips. So let's talk about one of the first things that I discuss with a new puppy owner and that is MOB rules, mob rules or also known as management of behavior. It's very important that you effectively manage your dog's behavior because when your puppy comes into the house they are going to do all kinds of behaviors that you don't like. They're going to chew on your furniture. They're going to pee on your carpet. They're going to knock the garbage over. They're going to do all of these behaviors, and a lot of times we get very frustrated with them because obviously nobody wants their furniture chewed up and their shoes chewed and poop on their carpet. But what you have to understand is this is normal, natural canine behavior. If a dog was chewing on your wood furniture, you would blow a gasket and go crazy on the dog. But if you were outside and your dog picked up a stick and started chewing on it, you wouldn't be that upset. So you have to understand that your wood furniture is just like a stick to a dog. Your green carpet is like a lawn to your dog. So we have to effectively manage our dog's behavior. That is done by using crates, and we'll get into that in just a few seconds. The next thing that's very important for new puppy owners is socialization. You have to get your dog exposed to a lot of different people, places, situations, sights, sounds, smells, you have to do this as much as you possibly can in the beginning, and you need to start early. Start very early. As soon as your dog comes home, start the socialization process. What happens is if they're not properly socialized, your puppy could develop behavior problems as they get older. One of the biggest problems is fear. It's very difficult to work with a dog that's afraid. And if they don't get properly socialized, they could develop fearful behavior. So start early. Socialize with a lot of different people. Bring them out to different places. The uh, puppies that I get, I always try to find parades, uh, different parks that I can go to. I try to bring them to the beaches. I bring them in the woods. I bring them to the city. And I get them around a lot of different people. I also like to socialize with other friendly puppies. If a young puppy starts to socialize, interact, and play with other young puppies that are friendly, then as it becomes an adult dog, they should have good relationships with other dogs. There's nothing more frustrating than having an adult dog that every time he sees another dog just blows a gasket, starts barking, and wants to fight. That happens when they're not properly socialized as puppies. The other important thing to remember is social structure. Dogs are social animals. You'll hear a lot and see a lot on becoming your dog's alpha. You can call it that if you'd like, but I, I like using the word leader. I like the dog understanding that I'm the leader, the pack leader, and I do this by controlling the activities that are important to the dog. I don't use force. If you use force, then you could develop aggressive behavior in your dog. So if your dog, every time you were trying to assert yourself as the pack leader, and every time you, the dog did something you didn't like, and if you grabbed him by the scruff and shook him and yelled at him, and smacked them under the chin. This is going to lead to a dog that's going to be kind of nervous around people. So it's much better to control the activities. The activities that are important to your dog are playing, eating, sleeping, and social contact between you and your dog. So I control the food. I control the games that I play with my dog. I control the sleeping areas. And by doing this, I can teach the dog in a way that they understand that it's very natural. They understand that I am the pack leader very simple thing to do and very important to do for your dog. The other uh, real important puppy tip that I could give you is house training. This is where a lot of times the relationship between the dog and the owner breaks down. I've seen a lot of dogs that end up at shelters because of house training. So go back to MOB rules, management of behavior, and this is where we really start talking about crates and crate training. Crates are a very effective management tool. When you have a puppy and you're trying to house train them, you use the crate when you cannot be right there with your dog watching them. If your dog has an accident in the house and you walk into the room, 
10, 15 seconds later, a minute later, and you start yelling at the dog, it's going to confuse the heck out of the dog. By using a crate, it can find your dog to a small area so that when you can watch them, you can take the dog out as soon as they start to sniff and circle and it looks like they're going to pee or poop. You can bring them right outside. You can keep an eye on them. You can go outside with them so you can reward them for going outside in the right area. So it's very important. The other step is positive reinforcement. You want to make sure all of your training is done with a lot of positive reinforcement. This is praise, treats, toys, rewards. Training this way will develop a very good bond between you and your dog. Using negative reinforcement is no fun for you and it's no fun for your dog. And you can start training as early as eight weeks old. I start working with my puppies the day they come home. I start, I start doing some fun things with them and then I just do some simple obedience commands but as it starts to go on, the relationship starts to go on, I'll teach them to sit, lie down, come when called, walk on leash. You can do all of that when they're young. Do not, do not believe that you have to wait till your dog is six months old. That is some of the worst advice out there. And again, use lots of positive reinforcement and you'll have a good relationship. And the last thing to remember is the mutt method. And this is manage underlying train and time. So whenever you're faced with a behavior problem that you don't like, chewing, digging, barking, any uh, biting. This is a good acronym to remember. First thing you want to do is you want to manage your puppy's behavior. Again, this goes back to the crate, putting your puppy on a leash. Next thing is you want to figure out what the underlying problem is. So let's say your puppy has a digging problem. He goes out in the yard and starts to dig and dig and dig and dig. You have to figure out what the underlying reason is. Is your puppy bored? Is your puppy hot? Is your puppy frustrated? Once you figure out what the underlying problem is, then you can start to teach a new behavior. So you can, that's where the T comes in. Sometimes I'll build a little sandbox if I have a dog that really likes to dig and teach him just to dig in that area. And then it's going to take a little bit of time for the dog to learn the new behavior. But if you learn and apply the mutt method, you will have much more success. So don't forget, you can get my free ebook, 101 Ways to Improve Your Dog's Behavior, at AmazingDogTrainingMan.com. Thanks for watching this video, and good luck with your puppy.